Hello, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Jordan. I'm a composer and violist, and today I wanted to take a look at the soundtrack of Super Mario Galaxy. If you are not aware, Super Mario Galaxy is a very, very beloved game by very, very many people, including myself. And a lot of what people love about it is its incredibly memorable soundtrack. And so I thought it would be fun to just look at a few of the tracks from the game and do a little bit of a breakdown. And if this is your first time here and you enjoy this type of content, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you feel so moved. That's always very much appreciated. All right, so the first track that I want to talk about is Rosalina in the Observatory, or just Comet Observatory if you don't have much time. And the Comet Observatory is basically the hub world of the game, meaning that you access all of the different levels from the Comet Observatory. So you spend a lot of time there. And the reason I want to talk about it is because as you progress through the game, getting stars and grand stars and stuff like that, certain musical elements of the music most noticeably the orchestration changes and so as you bring this place to life throughout the course of the game the music kind of supports that with a livelier with a livelier musical setting if that makes sense and so there are three different versions of this track based on how far in the game you are um, so let's go ahead and listen to the first version from the very beginning of the game Okay, so that's just the intro and first phrase, and what you'll notice is that this is so sparsely orchestrated that it's basically a piece of chamber music. Like, you could perform this with four people. You just need a harpist, a cellist, a flutist, and someone playing the uh, vibraphone. There is also a synth on top of that, filling in a lot of the sort of high voice, um, but I think that's more of a textural thing rather than adding a lot of melodic content if that makes sense and that's something that you'll see all over the super mario galaxy soundtrack is you have mainly instrumental music and depending on what track you're listening to synthesizers will be more or less present but they're they're almost always at least a little bit there and what we'll notice with the second and third versions of the comet observatory is that this piece is really a waltz it's a really straightforward waltz in d major there are two there are two melodic sections, but this first version of it doesn't necessarily feel so much like a waltz other than in the very beginning of it. So let's play just those first bars again. So there we have the, the waltz rhythm, right? Pretty, pretty clearly one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But then beyond that, we don't have that rhythm anymore. So the, the sense of motion is mostly given by articulation and just the melody being active enough that the rhythm sort of carries through that, but there's not any any background motor, if that makes sense. And we especially get more of that articulation when we have the, the flute involved here. But overall, it definitely is noticeably more stagnant than the other two versions. So let's go ahead and listen to the second version. Immediately, you notice. <laughs> There's a whole string section here and woodwinds giving the accompaniment there. And so now we have that waltz rhythm driving. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So there's a lot more motion to this one. Probably also noticed in the intro that the uh, harp is much more present than it was previously. And again, I really, really like the waltz pattern that goes on. So the first beat is given by the basses who are playing Arco, and it's a very, very full uh, string sound. And then the woodwinds give beats two and three. So if you listen. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So that's really, really nice. And then another huge change from the previous one to this one is that when you have the second iteration of the, the main melody, the, the repetition of it, the cellos give this really, really beautiful counter melody. So let's listen to that real quick.
It's so good. It's so good. And then in the B section, we have violins, doubling, harp. And then there are these tremolo strings that sort of accompany that. So let's listen to the B section real quick. So you can hear the harp kind of on top of those violins there. And then the low strings on the, the tremolo. And then back to the beginning. Or the A section, rather. And so what has been absent from these, these first two iterations? Brass instruments haven't been accounted for yet. And also percussion instruments, uh, with the exception of the vibraphone in the first one, but that's more of a melodic role than... Uh, specifically a, a percussive role, if that makes sense, because the vibraphone is literally playing the, the melody. So let's go ahead and listen to the third one and see how it differentiates. Immediately you notice French horns, timpani, and cymbals, a suspended cymbal. So there's a huge percussive role right there. Let's listen to that again. Now the flute is decorating that melody. It's not the same counterline as the cellos were giving in the earlier one. But it's just sort of decorating. And now it's doubling exactly, so the flute is doing exactly what the strings are doing. And you do hear that counterline, that old cello counterline is now in a trombone. No, I think it's a horn that's giving that counterline now. The clarinet's decorating there. Now we're in the B section. And there's the oboe. That's the first time we've heard the oboe in a melodic role. And another big full orchestral swell. So it goes from being this, this very cute piece of music that is performable by, you know, just four musicians, a, a quartet, to this... Uh, wonderful majestic orchestral thing it's it's absolutely fantastic um i am a fan of of sparser orchestration because i feel like the the unique colors of different instruments can shine a little bit more prominently um so i do i do really quite like the first couple iterations a lot i think my favorite is the second um mostly because of that that cello counterline is, is more prominent than it is in the third so that's rosalina in the observatory um you can look any of those up on YouTube. If you just put the numbers one, two, or three after it, you'll get the different uh, versions. And then the other track I want to talk about is used in the Melty Molten Galaxy. It's called Hell's Prominence. And the orchestration of this piece is also really cool, but it's not what I want to focus on. Uh, so for now, let's just listen to the intro and the first phrase. Okay, so this first melody that's given in the sitar synth is based around a scale that is not very commonly found in Western music, and that is the Phrygian dominant scale. Uh, at least that's one name for it, but its prevalence in so many different cultures makes it so that there's a lot of names for it. This scale has prominence in North Indian classical music, Eastern European music, you'll hear it in, in klezmer tunes very very commonly, as well as Middle Eastern music and also flamenco music of the Iberian Peninsula. So it really is very widely used, but not so much in Western European music. And the reason that that's of any note at all is because a large portion of the Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack has its musical roots in the Western tradition. And this track is just one example of many in which the Western tradition is blended with musical elements from elsewhere. Sometimes this comes off a bit cheesy. Um, 
the Dusty Dune galaxy comes to mind. Uh, but in my opinion, the Melty Molten music uses its building blocks really, really effectively. Okay, so what even is the Phrygian dominant scale? Uh, let's start by looking at a normal Phrygian scale. This scale looks a lot like the natural minor scale, which has flattened third, sixth, and seventh scale degrees. And the only difference between the two of these is that the second scale degree is also flattened in a Phrygian scale. The Phrygian dominant scale, however, raises the third scale degree so that it sounds like this. So there's a lot of tension between the second and third. They have a, a lot of distance between them. Um, and this is the scale that Hell's Prominence uses in its main melody. So let's take a listen again with that in mind. Okay, so for the sake of this video being a consumable length, uh, those are the only two tracks that I'm going to talk about. I guess really I talked about four tracks technically, but three of them are sort of different versions of the same thing. But I would love to do more of these videos, uh, not just about Super Mario Galaxy, but about a bunch of different games. And so if you do want to see that type of stuff, then the best way you can let me know is either by leaving a comment or liking and subscribing or all of the above if you really if you really feel like it and yeah if you have a specific game or track that uh you want me to talk about uh seriously like just let me know um and i will i will look into it this is music that means a lot to me it's music that i grew up with and so i love talking about it and so i would love to do a lot more stuff like this so stay tuned for that thank you very very much for watching and i will see y'all next time <laughs>